Welcome to Drifo Guitars. My name is Chris. Behind the camera, as always, is Matt. And today, we're finally back at the 3,000 year old guitar build. It's been too long. I think three weeks ish, somewhere in there, Give since we put out a 3,000 year old guitar build video. <laughs> We've been busy. We've been a little busy, but we're back at it. Uh, Will, who's getting this guitar, is getting impatient and I told him, I don't care. So we intentionally slowed it down, actually. <laughs> <laughs> No, but in the last video, what we did is we cut the binding channels for this guitar, front and the back. It's looking really, really good. But today we're actually going to start gluing in said binding, so that's super exciting. Um, what we're gonna do is do maple binding on this guitar, which I think is a nice choice because it's gonna give us a pop of color, kind of give it a nice border around the guitar. And we have this really nicely done um, flame maple that we did earlier. We bent them up in our bending jig, but we're not gonna put that in this video because it's self-explanatory, right? What I like to do is do like anywhere between four to eight pieces of binding, and I bend them all up together. It just makes it a lot easier. We do them in this in the bending jig like you guys saw us do with the sides. So we're not gonna do the how to bend the binding. It's pretty self-explanatory. Whether you're doing it by hand or using a bending jig, um, your mileage may vary. But this is what we have, is a bunch of bent up binding. And you can see, because we took our time cutting those binding channels, how well they fit super nice inside of here. Um, the goal is that we're not gonna need to do much cleanup work afterwards at all. They look really nice. And we have a nice channel inside of here already set up for our purfling to go in as well. So what we need to do is cut this binding to fit really nice and tightly on this guitar so that the joints on the top and the back fit really nicely and then we can just begin gluing it in. Um, so with that, what I'm going to do is just kind of get things ready to go here. And what I like to do is start off with finding the waist area of the guitar. I'm put the binding in. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll go like this and I just kind of push it until it kind of fits in perfectly. And that's where I kind of base everything off of. Mostly because that area can be the most difficult to kind of fit. So once that's there, I can put a little piece of tape on it and call it for good. Now, my guitars are done slightly different than a lot of people's. I do my back straps. Let me see. I'm going to go grab one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on my guitars, I do my back strap or my, yeah, my end graft. Yes, I do my end graft like this and it wraps around the back side. I started doing that, God, probably like six, seven years ago. And uh, it was a decorative choice, but it actually makes it really nice and easy for me to build because what it does is basically on this spot right here where it's going to wrap around, I don't have to get them perfectly butted up against one another. So depending on how you're doing your end graft, you might have to do yours slightly differently, but I did want to point that out. So on the front of the guitar, I do need to get them to, to butt up perfectly because we end up with a visible joint right there. But on the back, we don't. So with that said, let me move this out of the way. With that said, when we do my guitar here, what I'm going to be concerned about is getting this spot up here near the neck joint dead perfect, but the one down here at the bottom of the guitar just needs to be in the ballpark. So it kind of is really nice for me. And then the opposite occurs on the front side where the bottom one needs to be perfect, but the top one doesn't because of the neck joint. It just uh, a little, it was a kind of a happy accident for me. It kind of allows me to be able to have a little bit more um, flexibility with my my uh, my joints so what we do is we tape that in right there in this spot and I'm going to find the center line of this guitar back which is right right there mark it and then I'm, I'm gonna push on here nice and firm making sure there's no slack in it bring it around and right here is the center line Sorry, I know I'm, I need to consider the fact that Matt is shooting video. Uh, I'm gonna put... Uh, it's, it's okay to be rusty, dude. It's yeah. <laughs> We're gonna put a mark there. But remember, we don't need to cut it to that line. I'm actually gonna be able to cut it kind of with a little bit of a gap right there. Nothing, nothing too crazy. So what we'll do is we can now pull this off. I'm gonna grab some, some snippies. And on this bottom one, because we don't really give a crap, I'm just gonna cut it. No big deal, we're gonna move it out of the way. Now this one, on the other hand, we need to get right, we need to get it really nicely done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it so that there's still some material there. And then we're gonna go over to my edge sander and get this lined up perfectly. It's just something that I started doing years ago instead of trying to get this right with a chisel, because one way to do it is to use a chisel and get this cut perfectly. But 
I found out that with my edge sander, it actually works a lot better and just doesn't have any issues with tear out. So what we're going to do is run over there real fast. All right, so what I do with my edge sanders, I come over here, I use my miter gauge that I have on here set to 90 degrees, and without even turning the machine on, I can just come over here and do this to the pencil line. And just like that, we have a perfect 90 degree uh, joint that we've put on here, and uh, it was that easy. Uh, I used to spend all this time with my chisel trying to get this thing cut just right, and then you'd end up with chip outs and all this stuff. Started using it with this ed with this edge sander. In fact, right out of the gate when I got this edge sander, that was one of the biggest things that I use it for. I can do 45 degree angles and do all kinds of just fine little finesses to all my miter joints for my binding. So if you do have either an edge sander or just a belt sander that's on a stationary platform, Think about using it this way, and it just makes your life so much so much easier. So we'll head over and see how this fits now. All right, so now what we have is a piece of binding that just fits in here, super nice. I did the wrong side. Hang on, nothing to see here. Hang <laughs> <laughs> on. Okay, so what we end up with now is a piece of binding that fits in here, super good. But most importantly. Is going to line up dead perfect with where we need it to fit and so what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing to the other piece of binding and uh, at that point i'm going to show you a little trick on how you can end up with getting your binding to fit a little bit tighter so you don't have any issues with gaps or anything like that so yeah same exact thing we're just going to tack this in place real fast mark it cut it on the edge sander and uh, repeat the same step so now we have both of our bindings kind of cut to length and they look really good. Now, if you were doing a guitar that has just a standard end graft on it, you need to make sure that this joint is very tight and that this joint is very tight. So what I recommend that you do is actually just lightly tape this all in place before you mark and cut the other end of it as well. That way it's sitting on here very tightly and you make sure that you don't end up with any gaps. I think like for me, uh, whenever I look at a guitar or somebody's like, hey, I built this guitar, the, one of the very first things I look at is the binding because it's kind of like the tell on uh, how long somebody's been doing this. And I think it's also one of the more difficult things in your first few guitars to get right. And so the trick is to really just the old measure twice, cut once thing, do this, measure it like six times and cut once and just slowly work yourself up to the point where everything fits really tightly. That's the, that's the key to getting it right. The other thing that you want to do uh, is make sure that your binding, once you glue it in, is sitting very tightly to the body, that it's just a very nice tight gap. And a thing that I do is actually, I take just some sandpaper, this is 100 grit, and I just round off the inside here, just very slightly. I just knock off the hard edge. Let me see, I'm gonna just do a little bit here, and I'll have Matt come in. And I don't know how well we can see it here, but it's just a very slight knockoff that I've done here. Kind of just put a little 45 degree on it. And what it's going to do is allow us to prevent any sort of issues with kind of uh, like if that hard 90 degree angle would make this a little bit of a gap right there. It just makes it a little trick so that this binding fits a little bit tighter. So that's something that you can do. Now, if you're going to do that, make sure you go around and uh, do it on the right spot. If you do it like on the outside or if you do it on this upper area here, you're going to end up with ugly gaps. So just pay attention that it's the inside corner of your brace of your binding so that it fits nice and tight. But I do that still to this day. It just is kind of like an insurance policy to make sure that you get a nice tight fit. The other thing that I'll do is I use a tape method and we're going to talk about that here in just a second. I tape everything down with binding tape is that this waste area tends to want to break your tape always wants to break it. So what you can do on the outside corner here is round that over just a little bit too. And it's just gonna prevent any issues. Well, it's gonna make it less likely that the tape breaks. Especially if you have a cutaway, you really wanna make sure you do this because it's just gonna save you some trouble. Those are ready to go. The only other thing that we need to do is make sure that this purfling is ready to go. And it looks really good to me. I'm not gonna do much. Mind you, I'm able to cheat just a little bit because of the way that I uh, the way that I do the end there with that end graph, so I don't have to get it dead perfect. So what I'm going to do is take a chisel. We'll come over here so you can see it, and I want to make sure that I get a nice clean edge on that. So I'm just going to come. Oh boy! Make sure you have a sharp chisel. 
that I don't. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I just smushed it. I just smashed it. Oh, oh nice. That, it's a professional operation we're running here. There we go. And then I'm going to take a little sliver off one more time. There we go. These are now going to be the pieces that butt up against each other and give me a nice clean look. So I just, I'll just i start off at the top here. All right, so what we need to do now, move this aside, is we need to glue everything in place. Uh, it's important that you kind of have a game plan in advance. I know that we've hit on that for every step of the guitar build, but I think it's something that uh, I'm going to keep driving home as we build these guitars because um, I always do everything in multiple steps. It's kind of like making the part prepping the part for glue up and then the glue up. So we're at that point now where we're prepping for the glue up and that's kind of like, okay, this piece of binding is over here on this side. This piece of binding is over here on this side. We're gonna do the same thing with the purfling. I've got my tape ready to go. I've got my glue ready to go. And I've like, I know where things are. You don't wanna get into the middle of doing this and all of a sudden you're like running around your shop wondering where the heck glue is because it, it's, it becomes an issue and I promise we've all done it. So let me see, I'm gonna go grab one. <laughs> But what we're gonna do now is normally I would put this in the um, vacuum holder. It just makes it really easy for me to be able to put a lot of pressure on it, but I'm not gonna do that in this case so that you guys can see it a little bit better. Plus, most people don't have a vacuum clamp. Um, what I am going to use for gluing, oh man. I'm gonna have to change out my tape here in just a second. But what we're gonna use to glue on this binding is the LMI or Stumac Brown binding tape. It works really, really well. And then once we're done with that, we're gonna wrap the whole thing in this thick rubber band just to kind of give us a little bit of insurance policy. There's uh, there's, there's so many different ways you can do this. Some people will use rope. Um, God, there's, there's people will use clamps, um, different types of tape. But for me, I've been using this brown, this brown uh, binding tape for years and it just works really well. Um, so let me go grab some fresh tape because we're going to run out here in a second. All right, I've reloaded this new tape on here and it gives me an opportunity to talk about this particular product. Uh, this tape dispenser that Stumac sells is so useful for this. I held off on buying these for years, but what I would used to have to do is I'd have the tape loosely in my hand and I'd break off all these pieces and I'd have them kind of set up on my workbench, just stuck to the side of the workbench so that I'd be ready to go. But now that I have this tape dispenser, it allows me to be able to just take off pieces as I need to and it makes it really quick. So if there's anything that you can buy that's going to help make this binding easier is one of these tape dispensers. I have, I think, three or four of them. They're awesome. I think we're ready to go. So what we're going to do is we've got our tape ready, our binding ready. I'm going to start on the side that's closest to me. Uh, and what we're going to do is take our glue here and get it in that channel. We don't need to go nuts, man. Don't go crazy with your glue. I did that, and now I'm gonna put just a small bead inside where the perfect channel is too. Easy, there we go. Remember, we are starting here with the easy side. The front of this guitar is gonna be a lot more technical because we're dealing with binding, two pieces of perfling, as well as abalone. Um, and so this is a nice introduction to the binding technique. Okay, so where I'm gonna start, not down here, because remember down here we're okay with a gap. We're gonna start at the top of the guitar because we need that to be perfect. So wherever you're doing your binding, start with the point that needs to be correct. Like on a cutaway guitar, you're gonna start at the tip of the cutaway because you have all those 45 degree pieces of binding that need to match perfectly. So that's what we're gonna start is up here. We're gonna line it up with my pencil mark. This might be difficult for Matt to get really good. It's just, it's, it is what it is. <laughs> I've got those in place. I'm going to take a piece of tape right now and I'm just going to kind of like use it as a as a placeholder. It's not really a clamp at this point. It's just kind of it's just kind of like a third hand. And then I'm just going to put a piece of tape right over here as well. Nothing crazy. And that seems good right now. So we're going to call that good. The rest of this is just going to hang off. Now, I'm going to take my tape this is gonna be an actual clamp. And I'm just applying equal pressure both down and this way at the same time and just getting everything in place. It's it's not super complicated. Um, it just takes a little bit of patience to come around the whole guitar and do the whole thing. You wanna work with like a sense of urgency, but not like, oh my God. <laughs> um, you know, you have about probably 15 minutes of working time 
with this um, this LMI glue or just white glue. If you're doing hide glue, good luck. <laughs> like that, you do have a much tighter working time with hide glue. Um, paying attention that as you're doing, I like to leave little gaps. So sometimes I see people that just overlap the tape like this, but the issue with when you overlap tape like this is you're not gonna be able to see if you have any issues. So by leaving small gaps between each piece of tape, it allows me to see if there's any gaps or anything like that. Um, just constantly checking to make sure that you're keeping that nice and tight. And uh, as we get to the waist area, the tape might break on me, which is kind of a common, kind of a common thing. That's why we did that sanding right there to round it over. Oh, see, look, it's, it's doing great. You can see how good this tape dispenser is working. It just allows me to be able to get in here and just quickly grab a piece of tape and move on. And then we're gonna come around. Just tack it in place. Like I said, that's not really a clamp. It's just holding it in place. And we're gonna keep going. You'll notice I have this guitar sitting on top of an old t-shirt as well, like do that. <laughs> it's gonna keep you from gouging up your top of your guitar, um, especially the ancient Sitka. <laughs> this would be a good time to plug the, uh, the Patreon. <laughs> yeah. uh, for those of you guys who have been enjoying the breakdown series or any of the videos that we do, consider supporting us on Patreon. Um, all of the money that we get there goes towards helping us be able to buy the guitars that we use in the breakdown videos and to just kind of grease our wheels so that we can do more of these videos um, because we're basically being paid for the time that it takes to do them. So we appreciate everybody who has supported us there. Anybody who's subscribed as well, if you haven't subscribed, please do that as well because we still are at a point where about 61% of the people who watch our videos are not subscribers. So if you're enjoying these, uh, you maybe not even realize that you're not even subscribed yet. So check out and see if you are subscribed. Hit that bell button. And uh, we appreciate everybody. Now back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> All right, we're getting almost to the end here. Something that you're going to see if you're doing this right is essentially by working your way down, you're pushing this and it's, sl it's slowly gonna get longer, essentially, like you can dry fit it all you want, but as you actually tape it in place, your binding itself is gonna fit better and become a little bit longer. Um, so that's something to think about depending on how you how tight of a joint you want on here. Well, and that's why you start at the top again, right? Exactly, that's why you start at the top um, and you just work yourself around. So what happens here for me is I end up with this slap, this broken, this piece of purfling that's extra long. Because we're okay with the gap right here, I just break it off. It's no big deal. Now this technique is gonna be similar to how we're gonna do the front side of the guitar as well. Um, but that's what's nice about the way that I do my end, my, um, end graft is it just gives me a little bit of wiggle room here. It's where I don't have to make everything perfect. So we're gonna spin this thing around while that glue is still wet because I wanna wrap my rubber bands around it um, while both sides are wet. Sometimes like on the top of the guitar, it takes me so long to get everything in place like the abalone that I'll just do one side wrap the rubber bands around it, let it dry for an hour, and then do the other side. It just depends on how much working time I have. But with this, it's nice and easy. So we're once again gonna apply some glue. Try to get that right amount on there. We're gonna do a little bit in the purfling channel again. And then we're going to be ready to do the same thing one more time. You can see how it's made it nice that I've got everything laid out and ready to go because now I can just grab this. I can grab this. The other side. And then we're ready to go. You're not running around chasing after things. I'm going to hold that in place. We're going to tack these down this is a lot easier if you're using plastic binding I don't like plastic binding plastic binding uh, inevitably in my opinion always comes to laminated I mean everybody's seen those Martin guitars like especially those of you that do repair work how many Martins have you had through your shop where the bindings coming off it's just because plastic shrinks and expands at different rates than than wood does and 
inevitably it, it ends up coming off. So I like to use the wood. Plus the wood looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is Chris comment fight of the week. Yes. Plastic binding isn't good. <laughs> no, nobody's gonna fight me on that one. <laughs> I don't think. Oh, have you been on the internet though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It's uh the wooden binding just takes a little bit more work, but it just looks so much better, I think. It does. It just does. So yeah, we're just gonna work ourselves around here. If you are finding yourself doing this and you're having some spots where there's a gap that you cannot get rid of, like, man, no matter how much, I'm putting so much pressure on it that it's breaking the tape, then don't kill yourself over it. Try to get it as close as possible because remember, we're gonna be putting this rubber band on here in just a minute and that's really gonna give us an opportunity to kind of put some pressure on this stuff. Um, there's, It's not the end of the world. And then even after the fact that we let this dry, uh, start pulling the rubber band and the tape off you're going to have another opportunity to fix any issues you might have. You want to get it as close as possible obviously but there's a couple more chances to fix it. This looks good. And uh, I buy, I make all my own binding now. We did a video a long time ago, I think, right? When we first started doing this channel about how to make your own binding. And uh, it makes it nice because with the wooden binding, it can be, if you're ordering it, it uh, sometimes they're, they don't match each other very well. So if you make your own binding, it's, it's nice because you know that they're gonna match really nicely. Okay, while this tape is still, I mean, sorry, while the glue is still wet, what we're gonna do now is put our tape on, or our bind, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our rubber bands on here and is. get everything nice and tightly fit on here. Now, we don't tend to have issues with gaps in this lower bow area. It's more of a gradual curve. It tends to not have issues. You maybe have some issues here. You tend to really have issues around the horn of a cutaway and the inside of a cutaway, and then you also tend to have issues here inside the waist. Uh, part of that reason is because you can't get as much clamping pressure on there with a the tape just because it wants to break. So what we do is use, either you can use just some cordage, some rope, um, or what I like to use is this thick rubber band material. I think I got this at Stumac. We'll put a link to it in the description. I'm pretty sure I bought this at Stumac years ago. Um, I actually have two pieces of this rubber band that I've actually um, just kind of tied together. And what we'll do, since we're not using my clamp right now, is I'm gonna hang the end of the body off of here real quick. Uh, make me nervous. <laughs> and I'm gonna grab an end. And I just push down on the body here. And we're just gonna work ourselves around and get this thing going. The cool thing about the rubber band is you can kind of adjust pressure to where you want it and just kind of work yourself around to the places that need the extra clamping force. We're only going to need one on this guitar, I think. That's pretty much it, man. Um, I tend to just put a little knot right here and then I'll just take the clamp it in place. Uh, most guitars though that have like more complex curvatures and stuff like that I end up using at least two sets of rubber bands on there. Um, if you have cutaways you know you, you can wrap them around the whole length of the guitar. You could put five or six rubber bands on there if you want to. And so that's pretty much it for the binding on this guitar. Well binding on the back of this guitar because we still need to do the top of it but everything looks really good. The last thing that you're gonna want to do is go around just and look and make sure that you don't have any gaps. If you do have any gaps, you can address them now. Uh, sometimes I'll even just use a light hammer and I'll tap that binding down 
to get it to fit nice and tight, but it looks it looks really, really good. I think this illustrates also right now why we took our time really trying to get those binding channels perfect so there's no waves or issues in them because now what we're paid off with is just a really perfect, nice and easy to fit piece of binding on here. Um, and you wanna make sure that they fit really well because we don't wanna end up having to scrape off and level this binding once we pull the tape off and then now our binding is paper thin because it didn't match and didn't fit very well. But with that, I think we'll wrap this one up because the next video that we're gonna do is talking about how we're gonna do the binding on the front side because we have abalone trim and an arm bevel to think about. It's a lot more complex. That's probably gonna be a two-part video just doing the binding on the front of this guitar. But uh, we hope you guys enjoyed it and learned a little something as much as I did. Maybe the real treasure was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> 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 we'll see you guys in the next one, folks. Thanks so much.